Okay, this lab we are going to do today is from seed group cross-cell scribbling attack lab. Complete the last two tasks, task six and task seven. Task six, writing a self-propagating XSS worm. Task seven, defeating XSS attacks using CSP. We have demonstrated during the class and you have to home work to think about that link method and the, how to set up website for CSP. Okay, now let's have a look about the description here. You are supposed to be familiar with all the prerequisites since you have done lab part one, XSS lab part one. The lab environment, you know all the user account and the DNS configuration, the patch configuration as I left uh, homework, how to set up the DNS configuration and a patch configuration. So for these uh, prerequisites, last week we completed a task one to five. Here you, you are supposed to be familiar with this HTTP headline. You have pre practice in so far in three labs. So you should be very familiar with this HTTP headline and uh, Firefox development tools. So we jump to task six. Writing a self-propagating XSS bond. We have two methods, one link method, one bond method, and both methods are required. So we need to complete the link method and the bond method. In the link method, we only need to put this part into the attacker's profile. And uh, inside the script, it will copy the code from this part from the source code and put it into the victim's profile. You may use the uh, other name XSS underscore worm, or you, you don't need that underscore. You can choose any name you want. The link method and the DOM approach we also practice this DOM approach. So we know this DOM pro approach, it uh, embed the JavaScript program in the infected profile and to propagate the worm to another profile, the worm code can use this DOM API to retrieve a copy of itself from the web page. Uh, template is provided. So these are task uh, six, and I also we need to pay attention for those URL encoding when we write this uh, script. We use the encoder your URI component function to encode those uh, script, my uh, script IDs, the head tag and tail tag and this, uh, the code itself. Since the website is uh, already set up for us, the ELGG XSS lab ELGG.com. So we have this uh, lab now. I want to go inside my website to make sure the profile for every user is clean. Uh, admin, I go inside to check his uh, profile. So I need to clean everything. Uh, 
make sure you choose uh, that uh, edit HTML. What is a client here? What admin? Actually, we rarely use this admin. Time for Alice. The poor victim. Okay, let's uh, check her profile. Here it says I'm triggered. The link method during the lecture is not triggered because that uh, JavaScript code uh, and uh, parentheses is missing. So the whole JavaScript is not executed. So this is uh, Alice. Now I check out Bobby. Check his uh, profile. Add the HTML, it's clean. So the last one, we didn't use Charlie. You may use Charlie in your lab. So this uh, Sammy, the attacker. In his profile, you see this uh, code with a link method. Okay, now everyone's profile is clean. Now we're looking at uh, Sammy, the attacker, right? Sammy, the attacker, and uh, construct two methods about uh, self propagating, self propagating uh, one. First one, the link method, the template are provided. Is in our course companion website in the lecture. So you check the lectures module two code then inside this of XSS and you see a DOM propagating, self propagating actually a the link method is so xss1.js. So the first one we want to practice this uh, link uh, method. Right? Here is a link method. We can check this uh, comment, put this link here, put this line below in the attacks profile. And this one it will link to the warm code this part of the warm code is put on the same machine. In the real world, you may put on other machines. Here I put on the same machine, use a, a single machine to complete this lab. If you use a two watch machine, change this one to the machine that hold the JavaScript code to its IP address. So for simplicity, we use a single machine. And inside this part, yeah, Windows window dot on, on load. When web page is loaded, there's a script will be loaded and triggered. You'll see that is alert. Uh, I'm triggered, which means uh, the code is running. And here we need to pay attention to this uh, attack ID. Use the techniques you are familiar to ID to yours. May your semi. The GID is not a 47. Here, my Sammy, his GID is a 47. I just keep a 47. So what you need to change is only this GID. You know how to find it. During the lecture, we explained each line of this code, right? Okay, now you can uh, copy this code and put it inside a file. I would uh, like to view the raw code Conda A and Conda C. Okay. 
I'll create a folder to hold today's uh, materials. Lepton. The first one I want to create the xxs uh, dot js. I need to make sure this name is the same as this one here. Then we open with the Sublime Editor. And paste your code here. Control V, paste here. Control S, save it. Okay, now we have this uh, code. We need to put uh, on this default website. So the patch. And also, if you don't want to show up this alert, I'm triggered. You may comment out this alert, I'm triggered. You don't want that in the real world because that one we are. It just uh, notify the victim you are attacked. So you may want to comment out this part. Comment out. I'm uh, triggered. Gonna save it. Okay, now we want to uh, copy this code. Open a terminal window to copy this code to the default website. All right, the default website uh, sold by Apache. So don't copy this xss warm.js to wall.w.html and that folder. Okay, so copy it there. How do you verify it's already there? You just uh, copy this uh, address, this URL, and you see, paste it here to see whether you can see those code. Right, so the code is here, but this alert is not uh, commented out. So we need to comment out that uh, code. I wonder why it's not com commented out. Maybe uh, I didn't save this uh, x xssworm.js. Let's have a look. We use sub l xssworm.js. You see, it's commented out. So then I copied it to that folder here, but it says it's, uh, it's not a uh, common out. It looks like a uh, uh, refresh because last time when I use, use it, it's uh, cached. So it's uh, loaded in from that cache. Now I refresh, then you see it's uh, common out. Now this, uh, JavaScript is hosted in our default website, supported by this Apache website, this one. Now to attack the victim, there's a link method, right? We need to put that line of code here. Put this line in the attacker's profile. I log it in as Sammy, Sammy the attacker. Add the profile here, make sure you edit HTML, paste code here. Now this uh, one is from our local host, our local website. Okay, save it. And uh, this code will not attack Sammy himself. All right, we want to check that code here. If this session.user.guid not equals the attacks GID, then you will send this request to modify the session user's profile. 
Okay, now Sunny set up this uh, one. Any users with the Sammy's profile will be attacked. And you will see the profile will be modified and add a sentence called here, Sammy is my hero. You may change it to any description you want. Now we log out and log in as a Alice. Now log in Alice, you check her profile is clean. If she visited uh, Sammy, she see there's nothing in Sammy's profile, just run about me. When she go back, check her own profile. Sam is my hero. Her profile is modified. If she check her profile, just see this sentence in visual mode. If she has this HTML, she will see two parts. The first part is that Sam is my hero, and this is script code, dot code. It's embedded in that paragraph. Now, if anyone visited uh, Alice's profile, will be attacked. Now, Alice is not only a victim, but also an attacker. So let's log out and log in as a Logging as a Sammy, do you think do you think Sammy could be attacked? No, that because that code there is a GID not equal to Sammy's GID, then we are being attacked. So we log in as Bobby. Okay, now Bobby uh, goes through these members and uh, visit uh, Alice's profile. He sees that means my hero. Then he check his own profile. Sam is my hero. He is attacked by Alice. Oh, this uh, link uh, method. If uh, Bobby check his uh, profile, you see the code is copied here. Right? Code is copied here. So this is the link method for self-propagating one. Now, before we do the next uh, attack, the DOM method, let's clean all this stuff. Under A, delete, save it. So now Bobby's profile is cleaned. And log out, log in as Alice and clean Alice's uh, profile. Let's clean her profile. Con uh, delete. Oh, it's cleaned. And save it. Then we go back to Bob. To Sammy. We already changed our body. We go, go back to Sammy. Sammy's attack now. He want to change uh, the link method to DOM method. Maybe because he posted a code in a website and that website uh, is not running known. So he want to put this code in his uh, profile. It was just DOM method to make this one independent or third party uh, website becomes a more stronger one. Okay, for the link, uh, for the DOM method, we also provided a template, right? So you will use this template and do it by yourself. So the DOM method is this part. 
So this part you just put the code in Siamese profile and then you need to make sure your Siamese, this GID should be your Siamese GID. This is 47, this is my Siamese GID. Yours may be different, so you need to change this part. Maybe you are also interested in changing other parts. It's up to you. We did the DOM method. Now we complete uh, task six. Now we go to uh, task, uh, task seven. For task seven, ELGGS count measure. During the lecture, we use a third party HTM input field module, J, JSOP, right? For this ELGG, it has a built-in security plugin called HTML. Actually, it's a HTML load together, combined to HTML, HTM load. And this can be ins installed and used to uh, validate the user's input and remove the tags from the input when it's activated. And now let's how to let's see how to use it to turn on the counter measure logging the application as admin because only the admin can configure the whole website, right? Go to account administration plugins security and spam, then you choose this uh, HTML load and click activate to enable this counter measure. After you enable this counter measure, you try those two attacks again to see whether you still be able to propagate your attack. Here there is a, beside this one, there is another built-in PHP method called HTML special choice. For those students uh, have taken PHP program, I think you are very familiar with this uh, function, which is used to encode the special characters in user input, such as this less than is changed to this one, larger than is changed to this one, etc. So this uh, forwards this backward slash is a typo, it's not removed from this uh, document. So you may go to this place to find the function called this one in this uh, text.php and all these PHP files. Um, comment the corresponding HTML special choice function called in each uh, file. So there are two ways. One way you use this plugin, the second way you use this function. Now with those uh, counter measures, practice uh, task seven, defeating XSS attacks using CSP. Here, let's see this one is, uh, this subject section is only for information. So if you want to do it, you may uh, try it, enable the plugin to see whether you still be able to attack it or you try this, uh, enable this function by uncomment the line only once for your information. On task seven, you, we use a CSP, content security uh, policy. We know the fundamental problem of XSS vulnerability is in that the HTML allow drops through code to be mixed with the data based on the principle, isolate data from code. So we can defeat this uh, attack using this CSP policy or use the method provided in the 3.8 section. Yeah, now let's see how to use CSP to defeat the attack. We know CSP does specify the trusted source code, right? The source of the trusted 
or trust data source. Or draw through your code. Whether you trust it, uh, draw through your code inline or offline, in file or off file, and so on. Here in this uh, task, as we demonstrated during the class, during the lecture, we use a simple web server instead of this full featured Apache web server. So then you can use this method to put in instead of Apache web server to see whether you can defeat this XSS attack. So for this one, we use this Python program run the HTTP server that lessens to port 8,000 as we demonstrated in the class. So then you can change it to other port number, unused port number. And the IP address is a local host. Here's the CSP file you may download from the official website. See it grow, right? CSP.zip or download from our course companion website. It's just copied from that C website. Then you can follow these steps to complete this lab. Here, yeah, those failed, change it to OK. How do you change them to OK? Let's download from this part. It's zipped. Then save the file. Or it's under the download folder. Right click, open in your tab. Control X. And we paste here in a lab time. Then extract here. So you see all the code and this HTTP server. Now, where do we set up those CSP policy? In this server, the head port, as we demonstrated. Right? In this head port, you set what source you trust. Self and example secretary.com nonce. Then in that uh, web page, yeah, CSP test HTML. You can see this uh, code here, nonce. And the website here, we have a website, secretary 79. Now, how do you make this website works? Since we don't use Apache, so we don't need to change Apache's configuration. We use this uh, simple website, follow these uh, steps. Set up DNS, just add these three lines to this etc host file. So do sub, sub L, the etc hosts. Here, what do they put two lines during the lecture, right? Here. For CSP test, six day 79, and one more. That uh, set to. Congrats, you save it. And now you may uh, test whether it uh, works or not. But before that, we need to uh, run a uh, server. Here, our server is inside CSP, Python 3, run that HTTP server.py. Press enter, it's running. Now you may uh, check this uh, 
links copy it. I'll copy and paste it here. You will see this. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Secret. You may check the code. Why it's okay? Each line one, two, three, four, five, six, line four. Line four is a uh, area four here. You check that uh, area one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Is a uh, four from self is okay. File, file from this uh, 68. You see this uh, 68. And this 68, this uh, external website of the DNS name is enabled here in the CHP policy. That's why you see, okay. And others not in this list, you see the failed, failed. So now your turn to just change the policy in this HTTP server, but you need to restart that HTTP server every time you change it to complete, to make sure here, Field one, two, four, five, six, all display okay. And include your code in the lab report. Uh, 